Hello everyone, this is Jackie Williams and in today's video, first I want to share with you this cute card. I actually received this from Shelly Gardner for a uh, milestone and I thought it was so cute and I've had it sitting on my shelf for some months now, but I wanted to share with you some variations of this very simple idea. Now for tonight's project, I'm going to be using the Circle Sayings uh, bundle. So um, I'm going to use the two and three eighths inch circle punch for the circle on this style of card. However, if you have a different size circle or if you have dies, you could use those too. It's just that the punches are particularly quick and easy. And for our sample tonight, I'm going to be using these cute little seashells. So what I have here is a three by three inch piece of watercolor paper and I have already white heat embossed those seashells across the top just because uh, heat embossing on a video is kind of boring to watch and it's very noisy. And then I'm just going to take my water painter and I recommend that you first get the area you want to watercolor wet. It doesn't have to be soaking wet, but just a bit wet. Then I'm going to pick up some of that soft sea foam and just give the whole area that I'm, I want to color in a bit of a watercolor wash. Just to give me a base color. And then I kind of blend it out down here to the bottom so the color fades through. Next, I'm going to take my Lost Lagoon. And I failed to say, but just in case you hadn't seen that before, if you turn the ink pads over and give them a little bit of a squeeze, then you will get a puddle of ink right there in the lid. And uh, you can just pick up from there. If you're doing large amounts of painting or um, large areas, you could use your ink refill in a separate container or just drop some ink refill right here in the lid and then when you close it up, it will just go into the ink pad. Okay, so something like that. You can see that I've watercolored here fairly messily. So I haven't been overly careful with that. I'm just gonna let that dry just for a few moments. And then I'm pulling out Pretty Peacock. These two colors are so nice together, the Pretty Peacock and the Lost Lagoon. Next, I'm going to just take my pen and I'm just gonna spread that color a little bit. So even make it even a little more messy and then just spread it through so it fades out. So you can see a bit of the green and a bit of the Lost Lagoon. And then I'll take the Pretty Peacock, just little bits of it and just add some a little bit of color in through those shells and starfish. And because it's so wet, the color is just kind of bleeding to fill the space. And it's going outside the lines just a little, but I don't mind that at all. Now, if you'd like, before it's completely dry, you can take a bit of the new wild wheat. I just like this little touch of brown slash yellow, just to kind of lift it a little. And of course, when it mixes with the blue, it makes kind of a greeny color too, but it just um, adds a little bit of lightness and a little bit of a different color so the whole card isn't blue and green. I quite like how that looks. Okay, now I have one here that is already dry that I colored earlier. And from there, I'm going to stamp my words. So I'm going to use Warm Hello. This is also from the Circle Sayings. And I'm going to stamp that in the new Pebbled Path which is probably my new favorite neutral color for words and things at the moment. All right, now I'm gonna set that aside. And for the card front, I have a basic white card base and that measures five and a half by, well, eight and a quarter for me, but if you are in the United States, it would be eight and a half. And then I have cut um, you can just use the designer series paper at about five and a quarter by three and seven eighths or four. Um, but I've cut my paper just an eighth of an inch smaller and, and matted it with some Lost Lagoon. So you could do just the paper or have two layers. I like the two layers just for stability, but either one honestly works. And I should say this is the Irresistible Blooms paper. I think that this particular print is quite nice with the um, 
nautical type of images. Now I'm just putting that paper in right to the back of the punch, making sure it's reasonably even left and right, and then just punching out the aperture. Now we don't need these, but I have a little container that I put them in, you know, just for a future project if I need a label or something. Then I'm just gonna put a few dimensionals, maybe four or five around this, and then take this and center that up. So it didn't really matter where we put this on the paper because we could just, you know, move it around when we are applying it. And then from there, I'm just going to add this to my card. Don't need dimensionals here because I already have dimensionals underneath. So I'll just put a bit of glue up there at the top. Now, this is pretty cute even as is. So you could just go for quick and easy, but I'm just gonna add a few more things and you can decide where you wanna stop when you're creating your card. So I'm going to take some of the Glitter Organdy ribbon. This is one of my favorite ribbons. I just love how sheer it is and it just adds that little bit of sparkle. You can also add a bit of linen thread there and I'll cut those a little shorter. And then that is also cute as is, and you could take it up one more step. And I have embossed just a few more seashells and cut those out. And you could just dimensional one of those seashells. And then I've got a couple of the starfish that you could put down here just to bring the the theme down and then these really great flat pearls are nice for this sort of uh, for something you're going to put in the mail you could just add a couple of flat pearls there too and if you feel like you want more contrast one nice thing about watercolor paper is you can keep adding color to it and water because it's made of cotton it can just keep accepting different um, more and more and more layers of color. So I've just added a little more of that wild wheat to it just to, to contrast a little more with the papers. So here's one that I made earlier in a different color and uh, same pack of papers as you can see, but this one I didn't layer on the cardstock. It's just the designer series paper straight onto the card base. I like both of those. And then I want to show you a few other samples using this card layout. So here's a very simple one that is just a piece of printed paper, printed paper, and a card base with some words and embellishments. And these papers are coming out July 2023, and they are called In an Open Sleigh. And they're a really nice, Christmassy, wintry type of prints with um, these picture sort of prints in it. So you can look forward to seeing more of those. And then these are a couple of samples that were fairly similar to each other, even similar colors, coincidentally. And these, these ones are older ones from my stash, but it's actually the exact same design where you've got the aperture, the circle die cut or punched out with then um, some images behind. And this one's with adorable owls. And then this one was a Christmas gnome set we had probably two or three years ago. And then this is a sample using the very cute, it's a science set. This one, I, I don't have anyone in my family who's a scientist, but I still thought this was just so adorable and I loved it. So I've made a few things with it. So this is the same design, but again, I've stepped it up just a little. I put that mat underneath here, but I've also put then another, a third layer with that uh, flag shape through the middle and then just punched all the way through all three and then we've got you know the microscope and then the cute little saying i thought this one was quite fun then my next sample uses this new set called courage and faith and if you are someone who doesn't prefer biblical words you could just substitute in uh, words of your choice but these uh, little curved images are quite useful around a circular aperture so this is what i came up with and um, I white embossed those wreath type images and then just added a nice three-dimensional flower. So this one is uh, fairly simple with, not, with no extra layers in it. 
And then I decided to step it up and made that aperture actually a shaker card, as you can see. And this one I've used the masterfully made papers and the paper florist dies to create this beautiful three-dimensional flower. That's just one of the mini flowers in that set. And then my last sample is also a shaker card, this one using the zany zoo. And this one I've put the words then underneath or inside the shaker, and then my image and words on the outside of the shaker. So there are all my samples to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed that and that you enjoy using this simple template using the two and three eighths circle punch and have fun making these cards. Leave me a comment, share this video with your friends and of course subscribe and I'll see you next video. This is Jackie Williams, bye-bye.